It was the AEW Dynasty Go Home Show version of Dynamite, but unfortunately the big draws went home last week because CM Punk wasn't here tonight. We did get John Moxley, we did get $40 million worth of talent in Okada, Osprey and Mercedes money, but we all know they are a waste of money. Let's talk about it guys. Welcome back to Fog Wrestling here for your AEW Dynamite review. Um, this show was very lacklustre. Last week was kind of embarrassing with the whole CM Punk all-in footage being aired. We then had Will Ospreay as well taking an attack, taking a shot at Triple H. So yeah, last week's show wasn't a good show. But there was controversial things happening last week, you know, there was talking points from last week. This week, I honestly don't think there's that much to talk about. The show wasn't good, but here, let's start at the beginning. Probably the biggest thing to mention is that John Moxley is back. Wild thing plays in the arena. Moxley is back from his time in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He is now the IWGP Heavyweight Champion, so... He's wanted to win this belt for five years. He says for the last five years he's done his utmost best to win this championship. And it's just not really a good look where this guy is claiming that for five years this belt is all he's fought about. I mean, he would have been the AEW World Champion in that time. So this guy has been the AEW World Champion. He's been, he's been competing for the AEW World Championship. He's been defending the AEW World Championship. Yet, he said... All he's cared about in the last five years is winning this IWGP Heavyweight Championship. So, it's just a bit weird. I mean, it would be like someone in WWE. Could you imagine if Austin came out in 2002 and he said, the only thing I've thought about in the last five years is trying to win the TNA World or the TNA X Division Championship. It's like, holy fuck. You've been the world champ. You've been main event in WrestleMania. So why are you not caring about that? So it was interesting. Moxley, well, it wasn't really interesting, but I thought that was interesting. Moxley came out, spoke about how when you, you put a target on Daniel Bryan, you're putting a target on his friend. Therefore, you're putting a target on John Moxley. John Moxley calls it the Don Callis family. He calls Don Callis a creep. And he says that he's going to take the Don Callis family out, starting with the biggest one. And that, of course, is Will Hobbs. And then he says he's not going to attack him in the parking lot or whatnot. He's going to, he's going to wrestle him. And then he's going to take him to deep waters. Blah, blah, blah. A load of shite. Who cares? John Moxley's back. I mean, is he a good promo? He's not bad, but... I don't know. John Moxley doesn't really get me excited. I think John Moxley is a decent main event level talent for AEW but he's not the man he's not the guy you build a company around that guy AEW did have but they let him go so it's unfortunate for them but next week on Dynamite we're getting Moxley versus Will Hobbs so there you go Moxley says there's a lot of great wrestlers in the world but there's only one John Moxley and then the crowd are going Moxley da -da 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 -da. so there you go uh, we've got Mercedes Monet cutting a promo in the back she says that who attacked her when the lights went off, she doesn't know, but lights off, eh, sounds like Julia Hart. And she says, or maybe it's someone who wants her to think it was Julia Hart. Either way, there's a price to pay when you mess with Mercedes Monet. Are we supposed to care? I mean, are we sitting here really caring who attacked Mercedes Monet? Is it Julia Hart or is it Willow Nightingale? First of all, I don't give a fuck about Willow Nightingale. And her big fat ass. And you know what? I wish Julia Hart would come into my room tonight and attack me. But it has not happened. It's probably never going to happen. And I could care less whether she attacks Mercedes Monet in her room. Okay? Unless she's coming into my room. I don't really care. So, again. Julia Hart. Willow Nightingale. Who gives a fuck? I mean, who really cares? Seriously. Anyway. Willow Nightingale then is being shown on the Tron, she's been attacked backstage, so we were supposed to get Adam Copeland versus Willow Night Adam Copeland and Will Nightingale versus Brody King and Julia Hart, but it turns out Will Nightingale can't go. So this basically turns into a two on one match, but the problem is men can't wrestle women. So it turns into a one on one match with Julia Hart just standing on the apron um, doing nothing. So Julia Hart standing on the apron the entire time, not getting involved, yet the commentary team are making out 
Edge is all alone. And the Edge is essentially in a two-on-one match. They're saying the Edge can't tag out. But neither can Brody King. So Edge isn't really alone here. It's not two-on-one. It's one-on-one. -on -one. The only difference is Julia Hart is standing on the apron. So that is that. I mean, they're, they're trying to make it out like a handicap match. But it's not a handicap match. It's not nothing close to a handicap match. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Um, then Willow Nightingale drags her big fat ass out. She gets into the apron. Eventually she gets in the ring. Um, Julia Hart attacks her with like... I don't know, a chain or something like that. Adam Copeland sees that Julia Hart is going to win, but he can't do anything because he can't touch Julia Hart because she's a woman. So instead, he dives over the top rope and takes out uh, Brody King. And then he loses the match because Julia Hart beats Willow Nightingale. Even though it was so fucking obvious that Julia Hart had Willow in trouble, but Edge just isn't allowed to do anything because he can't physically touch her because we're not allowed to see male on female contact it's like so dumb i mean this makes edge adam copeland look like a jackass he, he looks like a buffoon a moron an idiot he looks like all of them they, they need to stop doing this honestly if they can't have men and women uh show i don't know good psychology or whatever in the same segments or matches then yeah maybe they can't actually physically touch or physically do attacking maneuvers but there's other ways to do this okay i mean look at the i mean triple h and ronda rousey i mean i'm sure triple h touched ronda rousey multiple times in that match and it wasn't overly offensive for triple h but he still put hands on her i mean surely they could have done something here the way Edge just let his team get beat because he didn't want to touch Julia Hart was embarrassing. He could have saved the match, but instead he decided to throw himself over the top rope. What a fucking bum. What a moron. Adam Copeland. Sucks. Anyway, Brody King, Julia Hart win. It is what it is. Um, it, it wasn't a two-on-one match. It was a it was a one-on-one -on -one match with Julia Hart standing as the manager, essentially. That's what it was. Mercedes Monet came out with a chair after. She stared down Mercedes. I mean, no, she has Mercedes, sorry. She stared down Willow, and then she shaked hands with Adam Copeland. I mean, who really cares about that? We got Renee Young backstage with Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe said that Swerve Strickland is a choke artist, but at Dynasty, Joe is going to choke him out instead. I mean, Samoa Joe, he's not a bad wrestler. He's a good wrestler. He's a decent promo, but he's a bit boring. I'm sorry, Joe, but you are, you're boring as a champion. You're just not really the guy I think that should be the world champion. But then again, I suppose you're the best they're a bad bunch. So it is what it is. Up next, we get a trios match. The Elite versus Pac, Penta, El, Cerro, Medio, and Daniel Garcia. Nothing to see here. Uh, the Elite win. Daniel Garcia fucking sucks. Rainmaker, one, two, three, boom. Who cares? Who fucking cares? Then we get a ladder spot. And then we get a save from Pac with a, like a, a hammer. So Pac's running about with the, the, I don't know, the ring bell hammer or whatever. Just not very interesting. Daniel Garcia absolutely sucks. Is he a professional wrestler? Is he a sports entertainer? He's neither. He's a fucking bum. Anyway, up next, speaking of bums, Chris Jericho. How the mighty have fallen. This guy defeated Rock and Austin on the same night. I mean, Jesus Christ, he doesn't look like he deserves to be in the same arena now as Rock and Austin. Never mind share the same fucking ring or beat them both. But Jericho comes out. For some reason, he's pleading his innocence to Hook. He wants Hook to forgive him and he wants Hook to be under his branch of fucking knowledge or some shit like this. Very corny here. Jericho wants a chance to teach Hook all the things that... Nobody's taught him before. Jericho lists all the guys, all the guys that he's helped take to the top here on AEW. Um, that was that. I'm yawning because it was so fucking bad. Uh, so yeah, Jericho says to him, "Are you ready to sit under the brilliant branches of the learning tree?" And Hook says, "No." Hook's just sitting in there, not really caring, just eating a packet of crisps. It's like, okay, this guy fucking sucks. And then Taz is like, "Right, Jericho, that's enough." Don't do this. And then Jericho says, you need to back off. And Taz is like, right, you're going too far here. And then Taz gets shoved by Jericho. Jericho says that he's trying to be the father that Taz should have been. Taz then goes down holding his knee. And it takes Hook about 30 seconds to actually get in Jericho's face. And then he tells him to leave the ring. Or else he'll beat him anytime, any place. And then that's it. Jericho just leaves. Hook doesn't even check his dad. 
Taz is like down on the fucking ground here holding his knee. He just got pushed by Jericho. Yet Hook isn't even caring. Hook doesn't even fucking check on his father. I mean, this was dumb. Why did it take Hook so long to get physical or to get in Jericho's face after Jericho pushed his dad? I don't get it. It makes no sense. This this segment was shit. It really was. Then Swerve did an interview with Renee. He says that he's so confident he can beat Joe, but he's not going to tell Renee. He's going to tell Joe in the middle of the ring tonight. Okay. Then we get Mariah May with Tony Storm versus Diano Parazzo. I mean... Watching Dynamite's tough. I mean, it is. But if I was offered a threesome with Mariah May and Tony Storm, I, I would watch it for the rest of my life. I would do 10-hour reviews every week on Dynamite. I mean, what what a triple threat match that would be, seriously. But we don't get that. We get Mariah May taking on Diana Perrazzo. Who cares? Diana Perrazzo wins. She's chubby. She's fat. I mean, that's about that. You know, that is what it is. She's not a star. Wow, she was the Impact Champion. I mean, look at TNA. It doesn't matter if you're a champion in TNA. I'd be more concerned if you were not a champion in TNA. That company sucks. TNA is not what it's been. TNA is done, okay? When I think of TNA, I think of the good years. For the, the past decade, TNA has been on life support, is what it is. Um, then we get, uh, we get Thunder Rosa coming out. Takes out Luther, then gets in the ring and saves Diana Parazzo, and then she puts makeup on Tony Storm. Who cares? Um, Tony Storm's got a big ass, by the way, and you can definitely see it in her gear, in her tights, the outfits that she wears. It's great. Anyway, um, let's move on here. Apparently, we're getting the Ring of Honor six man titles versus the AEW trio titles. Winner takes all. It's going to be the Bang Bang Scissor Gang taking on the acclaimed and daddy ass at Dynasty. I mean, who cares? There's no need to have two sets of trio titles, so this is probably the best decision Tony Khan's made this week. Fair play. Match number four, Shane Taylor with Anthony Ogogo and Lee Moriarty taking on Orange Cassidy. Um, the Orange Cassidy is about a tenth of the size of this guy, Shane Taylor, yet he beats him. Uh, Orange Cassidy beating anybody is just not very realistic. How can a guy that weighs about 80 pounds, how can his finisher, how can his finisher move be a knockout punch? I mean, it'd be more realistic if this guy was knocking out people with his farts. I mean, that's... I mean, Orange Cassidy, maybe he drinks all the out-of-date OJ. You know, he just drinks all this, like, rotten orange juice, then he, like, knocks people out with farts. That would be more realistic than this little scrawny-ass bastard knocking out big black guys with a single punch. A Superman punch for a guy that's about four foot tall and is at 80 pounds. I mean... I mean, what are we doing here? Anyway, Orange Cassidy wins. The rest of the Shane Taylor promotions hit the ring. Uh, we see Trent Barretta watch on. And then that's it, really. Trent Barretta could have helped Orange Cassidy, but he decided not to. We've got a video package of Roderick Strong attacking Kyle O'Reilly. I mean, two bums from Undisputed Era. Does anybody fucking care? I believe Roderick Strong was in Undisputed Era. I'm not entirely sure. And where's the other one? Kyle Fletcher. I mean, what a shite faction that was. Remember that faction was getting talked about? It's just, <laughs> like it was some, like it was better than the NWO. Fucking hell, four skinny guys. Four skinny guys that can't even speak English. Four skinny guys, man, that couldn't cut a promo to save their life. I mean, Adam Cole's got the physique of a toothpick here, and we're pretending like he's the next big fucking Hulk Hogan. I mean, what the hell's happening? Anyway, match five, main event, Will Osprey taking on Claudio Cascanoli. Who cares? Who the fuck cares? We get a spiral tap off the top rope, and then a hidden blade by Osprey. Osprey beats... Cascanoli, I don't know why Cascanoli should be beating Osprey. I don't give a fuck if Osprey's Osprey. He, he sucks, okay? At least Cascanoli's got a bit of size to him. He's got the Jason Stratham look. I think it was good when they had Cesaro teamed up with that hot Lithuanian chick because he kind of looks like a pimp. You know, he, I think he can pull off the the Andrew Tate sort of um, <laughs> Andrew Tate, Jason Stratham look where he's always got like a hot girl by his side. I mean, I can believe that. With Claudio Cascanoli. What I can't believe is somebody that looks like Will Osprey. Bruv. Bruv. I can't believe him beating someone as strong. A European fucking brute. Like Claud uh, Claudio Cascanoli. I can't just. I just. I don't buy that. After the match we get the Don Callis family attacking Claudio. Um, well Osprey doesn't. He's not happy about this. But then 
I don't know, Moxley comes out to try and make a save. Who cares? Moxley attacks Hobbs, take a shit on Fletcher, and then you've got Osprey just watching on. So, is Osprey going to leave? Possibly. It looks like it, I think. And then we get Swerve Strickland and Samoa Joe. They have a bit of a face off to end the show. Swerve Strickland jumps off the top rope. He does a swerve stomp on all the security guys. And then it's just Joe and Swerve Strickland face to face. And then Joe and Strickland get into a punching match. They throw some fists at each other. Joe comes out on top, hits a muscle buster in the ring. And that's it. Joe celebrates with the belt above Strickland. And is it Strickland? It is, aye. Well, I'm thinking it's Sean Strickland. It's Swerve Strickland. Okay. And anyway, he's not got the UFC belt. He's got the AEW belt. He holds it above him. And that's it. The show goes off the air with Samoa Joe hungry for donuts and hungry for a title win. So that was it. I mean, it is what it is. Wrestling wrestling headlines rated this show 8.25 out of 10. I am certainly not going to give it that. Um, I didn't really think there was much good on the show. I mean, you had John Moxley come out cut an okay promo. I mean, other than that, though, there was nothing that really held my attention. I thought the Jericho stuff was fucking shit. The Edge match was essentially a one-on-one -on -one match. Mercedes Monet is not doing anything for me. But at least there was nothing overly embarrassing on the show, so I'll maybe factor that in. I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. It's a generous 2 out of 10, guys. Wasn't the worst show I've ever seen, and at least Tony Khan didn't embarrass himself this week. So there you go, guys. 2 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'll catch you in the next one. Bean Fog Wrestling. Thanks for watching and peace.